Welcome back to Chow Time Pod. It's your host, Red. Got videos today from the wall. Please like, comment, subscribe down below. I really appreciate that. Let's get that channel. It's Chow Time. Is that men from 30 to 33 to 34, give or take, they're in that early 30s crisis, just as mm -hmm. most people are after they graduate college, like the early mid 20s crisis. You have another one in your early 30s, especially as a man, because you realize that, oh my God, I'm in my 30s now. And you either realize you want to continue to send it for mm -hmm. the next few years before you hit your mid 30s, or you're like, oh fuck, now I want to maybe get married or have like a serious prospect of a mm -hmm. girlfriend or. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the wall. In today's video, we'll be watching a woman telling other women not to date dusty men, not to go out with men who are all about going 50-50, and to go for the winners instead. We'll also hear from women in their 30s sharing their frustrations with dating nowadays, and we'll see how one woman advises men to get off dating apps because she's tired of dating broke guys. Your support means the world to us. Give us a like and subscribe to the channel. We're aiming for 150,000 subscribers before the end of the year. Share your experiences and advice in the comments. That's what helps this community grow. Turn on notifications so you don't miss any videos. Let's get started. I do get this question a lot, are you single by choice? And I know a lot of you want me to say, no, I'm not single by choice. Nobody wants to get with me. I don't believe most women are single by choice. Because I called myself a sluzzer for like two years online. Uh, but that is not the truth. You know, it's people too late. that are emotionally mature don't really care about that kind of thing. And that is from real studies that I've done myself through dating, okay? Well, maybe a few of them care, but who cares? Am I single by choice? I don't know. Do I want a boyfriend? Yes. Can I be all? I mean, again, if the man they wanted came along and was like, I want to marry you and take care of you, no woman is going to say no. It's just never the man they want. Just to find one? No. Like, it is actually hell out there. Like, it's hell. It's hell. Especially as you get older. <laughs> Guys, I'm freaking out. I can't be asked. And, like, I want to have kids in, like, two or three years. And it's not looking good for me nope. right now. It's not a looking lot good of for effort. a lot of you. And I don't know if you guys have been on first dates. Like, if you've been on a first date, they're not fun. First dates are rarely fun. Like, I've probably been on two fun first dates in my whole life. So, yes, I am single by choice now. But in the grand scheme of things, I, I do want a boyfriend. It's just like... You can't be single by choice and then want a boyfriend. <laughs> this is a woman who's hit the wall. The woman from nice the intro says that wall. men are going through a crisis in their 30s. But the reality is that men's timeline is different from women's. A man who works on himself has more years to build a family. He can easily date a woman 10 years younger in his mid-30s. But women don't have those advantages. It's even worse when a woman ruins all hope of a healthy marriage by creating an account on the Blue app, showing her body to half the world. That's why this woman is upset, because, well, you know what they started calling her after just two years. And it's a fact, no self-respecting man wants a woman with that kind of past for a wife. True. She realizes- I mean, again, you were on the internet spouting how much you were a 304 for two years. Most men are going to see that and be like, oh, you're still a 304. Is that her dating life out there is doomed. Maybe a simp will show up at some point, but not the kind of man she truly wants. Because, as I said, she hit the wall, and the wall doesn't forgive. <laughs> All these men who want to go 50-50 with the woman are the same men who complain that she's not feminine enough. Here's what I have to say about it as a dating coach. And if you're seeing me for the first time, hi, my name is Shanza. I am a dating coach. Are you married? Do you have any good results from your dating life itself? I have helped numerous women go from single to married. And here's I'm the thing, call bullshit. I am anti 50-50, 100%. My husband is a sole provider, oh, okay. even though I run my own business, even though I have my own money. So you're a trash woman that is his money is my money and my money is my money. Got it. My man is the one taking care of all the bills, 
the leadership, the initiation. He is full masculine energy. And that's how I prefer it. Because I was definitely a 50-50 girl myself before. And it really took a toll on my physical health. My It took a toll on your physical health to actually pay for your own things in life. Oh my God, the horror. Mental health. And it took me out of my feminine energy. And I really felt like I was stuck in survival mode. And it was extremely unattractive. And 50-50 is what causes... So you couldn't even take care of yourself because you were a broke dusty musty crusty and having to go 50 50 was so detrimental your physical and mental health because you couldn't spare the money because you were a broke dusty musty crusty if you're broke just say so problems in relationships because the men again the same men it's like the podcast men right they talk about how women should be a partner and nope. the women should we never say shit about being a partner. Women should be our wives and our girlfriends. Should go half and half, except that they are unable to maintain their end of the barter. They do not go half and half on chores. They actually are the ones that then want you to be more feminine. They want you to not talk back. They want you to not make them feel controlled. But in actuality, if I'm paying half the bills, then I am asking you questions about what you're doing with your money. And, you know, I, I am. Do we get to ask you what you're doing with your money? I'm coming at you like a partner and I will ask you questions because money's involved. Bottom line, even though men say they want a partner and they want a woman that will go 50-50 with them because the economy... You know, as a woman listening to this, it probably all makes sense. But as men listening to this, it's just like... He is so hard and yada, 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 yada. Don't listen to them. Don't get out of your feminine energy just to keep a man. It's not worth it. Stop it. Are you guys even feminine? What feminine energy is there? Get, Get some help. A lot of words just to say that your money is yours yeah. and your husband's money is both of yours. The classic woman who masks her lack of financial commitment to the relationship with so-called feminine energy. Right. Women these days keep going on about this 50-50 thing. They say men don't help at home, which is total nonsense. Most men today know how to function as adults, sharing chores even if they're the primary breadwinner. It's standard nowadays. Let's be honest, very few men can fully support a household on their own, very considering few. only a minority earn over $50,000 a year, which is the bare minimum to support even a modest household on one income today. So, when you hear a woman calling a man dusty just because he doesn't want to be the sole provider while she's working outside the home for eight hours or more, without being the traditional feminine energy woman she claims to be, She's simply looking for a beta provider to secure her long-term financial life. She's Pretty only much. interested in making her money go further and will eventually leave you when your money's gone and she has her savings and accounts in order. Don't date women who don't add value to your life. I used to be a girl that was completely okay with splitting the bill, going 50-50 on relationships, whether that's a first date, second date, boyfriend, girlfriend kind of thing. Until I realized two things that I'm sharing with y'all so that you can learn from my personal mistakes. The first one is I kept on getting broken up with by guys and I'd realized that my bank account has like 500 to to $1,000 less in it because of- Oh, congratulations. You ex experience how men experience when we date women and women break up with us and our bank account is lower. The relationship. And that is not an exaggeration. That's not even for like super long-term relationships either. And I was just like, I can afford to do this. I just don't want to. There's better uses for like $1,000 of my money than some man that's going to break. Uh, there's better uses for $1,000 for us better than giving women or taking women out on stupid dinners that are probably not going to stay with us. Break my heart. Number two, um, and this is the bigger one, if a guy is not willing to pay for a date with you, there is always going to be someone out there he's willing to pay for a date for. You are 100% correct on that. There probably will always be someone that will pay for the date, but is it a man you want? I didn't really realize this until I was having a conversation with my boyfriend at the time, who became my ex-boyfriend 24 hours later because he broke up with me on the phone. And he told me that he had gone on like, 
three dates with a girl from Hinge, like, shortly before we were dating, which is fine. I, I love talking about dating stories. I think it's fun. And then he said, yeah, I don't know how much longer I could have gone out with her for because I just couldn't afford to anymore. And I was like, like, what do you mean? Like, he, I kn knew he wasn't completely broke. But and you got to remember, you're paying 50-50 and you're losing $1,000 in your bank account, like you said, right? We are paying our half plus your half, so that's like $2,000 from our account gone. How do you not realize that? Come on, people. It's called math. And he was like, yeah, like, I just ha I had to pay for the dates, and I just I couldn't have kept on doing that. And I don't really get mad at a lot of things with people anymore, but that just genuinely very upset me because for every date basically we'd been on, it had been kind of 50-50. For anything that he paid for, I offered to pay for the next time, and he gladly accepted and let me do that. So you actually reciprocated like most women should. And now, because you reciprocated and you saw that someone else got a little bit better treatment, but he left her because he didn't want to treat her that way. Now you want to leave him because she got better treatment than you. This is the same conundrum that when you ladies let men just plow you on the first date or plow you whenever they want. And then I come along and all of a sudden I need to be the man. So... It just baffled me that he paid for three dates with somebody that he even said he didn't really like that much and didn't have much in common with. And so after I pressed him on this, I was like, well, what, like, what do you mean? Like, did she like, was she holding you hostage? And like, you had to pay, like, how would it be awkward, like, not to pay? And he did not um, elaborate <laughs> beyond that. But I would say personally for me, even if somebody like doesn't have their wallet, like one time thing, that's fine. But it just really kind of like changed my perspective on something. And I, after that, I was like, if he didn't break up with me, I would have broken, broken up with him. Anyways, um, as hurtful as it was at the time, I'm really glad I had that conversation and kind of came to that realization. And I realized everyone may not agree with me, but that's fine. These are my experiences. And I actually- So a good girl that used to actually reciprocate now doesn't want to reciprocate anymore. Gotcha would like to kind of hear what other people's opinions are because i feel like this is an interesting kind of issue just in relationships feminism right now so i'd love to hear kind of other people's takes and thoughts on splitting the bill i want you to notice two things here for women it's always about how you make them feel i always say that genuine interest isn't negotiable nope. the greater a woman's interest in you the greater the discount she'll offer True. a woman who puts True. up a lot of resistance to going out with a man <laughs> Like hesitating about simple coffee dates just doesn't feel enough attraction for you. But when she's genuinely interested, she won't mind paying. Now, looking at this empowered woman complaining about the money she spent on each outing with this guy, she realized her account was running dry. Ironic. Be Broke. Dusty. Musty. Crusty. Because all men notice this too. But hey, it's your duty <laughs> Ours is as double. a man to spend money on a woman who will eventually leave you for the arms of Chad. What really bothers this woman is that Chad was investing more in the other woman than in her, yep. treating her better, while she had to cover part of the date just to be with him. This fills her with jealousy because mm -hmm. he made her invest, while the other woman gets treated like a princess. Women are always competing, even after breaking up. They're watching to see who their replacement will be, especially how you treat her. That's why you hear phrases like, he married her, or he bought her a car, but he didn't do that for me. She's comparing the treatment you're giving the new woman with how you treated her. That's why she talks to her ex, feeling jealous of what you're doing for the new woman that you didn't do for her. If a man wants to go 50-50, it's because he's broke. Majority of the times, he doesn't even have enough money to support himself. So what do these broke men do, these broke boys? These are all projection because it's women that literally can't pay for themselves. That's why they need men to pay for their dinners and stuff because they can't. They can't even pay for on their own half because how broke and dusty they are. They will go and find ambitious single women really? who are emotionally That's what men are insecure. Doing. 
And then they love bomb you and they make you think that, you know, oh, this is what relationships are about. You're supposed to get with someone for in the name of love and then you build life together. And in the end, when you help him become the man he wants to be, when you help his bank account upgrade, that's when he leaves you. And this again, projection, who's building up men? Shut the fuck up. None of you women are building up men like that to where he gets to a certain echelon of life and then leaves you rarely. If men doing this to women and women leaving them, men paying for your education to become a nurse, a doctor, men paying for all of these things for you, and then you become make more money, and then you leave us. That's projection. And he goes and finds himself a feminine energy woman. So do not be a woman who builds a man up. Instead, be a woman who is in her feminine energy so that you can be with a man who's already established. And this one said that she's matched plenty of marriages. This is what I call bullshit. Real professional matchmakers can't even seem to do it with modern women. And this 19-year-old doofus is some guru. So you're not the one being left and after being used and wasted your time, energy, and money to help build someone's dusty son. Instead, be with a well-established or already established healthy masculine energy man who wants to provide for you. If you're ready to go from attracting lazy, broke man-childs to attracting high quality provider mindset, healthy masculine men, I highly, highly encourage you to check out the link in my bio and download my free dating guide. Cocaine is a hell of a drug. It is. What she's describing is called being the process woman, the one in a man's life while he's in his building phase. I won't deny that some men do leave their wives once they're at their peak, but honestly, that's a minority. Here's why 80% of divorces are filed by women usually after 7 to 10 years of marriage. The average mortgage payment period in this country is also around 7 to 10 years. Coincidence with the divorce rate? Mm -hmm. I don't think so. So, who's leaving whom? Who benefits more from divorce? Correct. Who's abandoning the man at his best financial moment with a devastating separation? Most women who follow the advice to wait for a man at the finish line, already established, are the same ones hitting the wall in their 30s realizing that the self-made man doesn't want a woman his own age. He wants someone younger. Plus, the man who has built himself up isn't naive anymore and often has a prenup in place if he decides to marry. True. So that mindset of not supporting any man and only going for the winner can really backfire. Because nowadays, to receive print- Well, again, the winner gets to do whatever the hell he wants. That's the problem that women don't realize. Princess <laughs> treatment, you first have to qualify with the king. Drizzle drizzle i personally think dating apps should only be for people who actually want to date get off if you don't want to date i feel like tinder is kind of known as the hookup app so okay sure you can go on there but get off hinge hinge is for dating don't go on there if you just want to hook up or find someone to snapchat back and forth with get off respectfully or someone says that they're looking for a long-term relationship but then they either literally don't respond when you're like trying to get to know them or plan a date shut the fuck up you really don't see the other side of things like men never get responses i can get 10 20 matches and not a single person responds to me you just don't get a response from chad it, or they ask for your snapchat a grown-ass man should not be asking for my Snapchat. I love finding my... I mean, it's called Snatch Chat for a reason. Well, 27, unemployed, who's looking for short-term fun. Like, respectfully, Michael. Respectfully. And respectfully, girl, why would you match with someone that is unemployed? Respectfully. Why? Because he's a Chad. I think you're a little too old for that. Like, why would you not want a relationship? And he lives in his mom's basement, and he doesn't have a car either, so you have to pick him up. And then, unfortunately, on the date, he's going to have forgotten his wallet. Um, but just short-term fun. Not looking for a relationship. No. Again, they really know how to pick men. 
they always pick the chats that live in mom's basements and don't have cars and don't have jobs and then blame all men for this. But even so, you choose to go out with Michael. Even so, you accept the dates. Even so, you want to go with Chad because while he might not have money, he has that genetic lottery you like. And it bothers you that even at 27, that man, despite having no money, only wants you for intimacy, right. not commitment. This is the inconsistency with women. On dating apps, no matter what men want, women hold all the power. Remember, only about 20% of men have any luck on these apps. The vast majority won't get a single date. Even yeah, like top 5% gets almost everything. Top 10% gets something. Top 20% gets a little trickle. Everybody else, you're fucked. An average woman will have thousands of options, meaning she can filter her choices more. A man has to pay for the app just to get a chance to be chosen. So, how is it that you, with all the power to choose, still complain about men? You have the ability to filter them out while the average man is left with whatever comes his way, True. hoping that after a match, he might be lucky enough to convince her to go on a date. But like I said, you pick Chad, then complain when he just uses you. <laughs> Again, women just tell on themselves, just the way they talk, it's so obvious. Oh, the people, the men on the dating app are just broke, dusty, musties, and crusties? Really? Really, girl? No, it's just the most attractive one that you're attracted to is the broke, dusty, musty, crusty one. Why? Because he can be. He gets to still run through women being broke and dusty. Because you women are just dumb. Please like, comment, subscribe down below. I really appreciate that. I'll catch you guys next time. Ciao.